Hello everyone and welcome to session 0 of Shadowland Denver 2055 campaign. I'm Jakub Vish, also known as A Faleg, and uh, in this uh, short-ish video we are going to be talking about uh, multiple things, what the campaign is, uh, how we, what Shadowrun we probably know if you're watching this, and uh, we are going to establish ground rules for the campaign, like the proper savoir and so on <laughs> during the game. Yeah, I'm kidding, I know how to say savoir vivre. Or do I? Did I take a two hour long French lesson between one sentence and the other and just cut it out? You never know. But yeah, uh, the introduction to this video is actually a bit of a funny thing right now. Because we already had this whole conversation a couple of days ago, we had, uh, this isn't a live recording right now, it's gonna be after you hear other people. Because uh, somebody is not very smart and that person is me, and I pushed stream button instead of recording button, so, so <laughs> the whole footage I recorded for this video went somewhere into the ether. Fortunately we recovered most of it, except for like the initial couple of minutes. So uh, other players aren't going to be able to say hello, but you will hear them later in this video. I'm going to try to recreate what I was talking about more or less. So, first things first. The Shadow, this campaign is happening in Shadowrun Universe in the city of Denver in the year 2055. Uh, the setting is uh, a small neighborhood in the Aurora Warrens that is in a bit of a trouble and the players are just normal-ish people living there with some unusual skills that aren't Shadowrunners. They're just stepping up to the occasion and they are going to be able to go wherever and see whatever during the campaign. It has a bit of a hooder setting. Uh, it starts uh, with uh, initially the idea of helping the neighborhood, but the players are free to do whatever they want. So. Uh, following this uh, session zero, is going, there's going to be session one, that is the only uh, pre-set quest in this campaign, and uh, after which everybody is just going to be free to pick uh, what they want to do, uh, the uh, deeds they want, uh, make their own decisions and uh, steer the game wherever they want to go. Now, as for me as a GM, I'm the Game Master of Shadowrun since uh, 1997, second edition of SR, and uh, I know the lore pretty well, if I do say so myself, and by that I mean I know every single nook and cranny of it. So, the players uh, with me in, uh, as a GM are going to have complete freedom to explore the setting however they like, do whatever they want, and it's going to be a very sandboxy campaign with uh, more than one uh, overarching story arcs going on and uh, with the entire freedom of decision on the player side they will be able to generally steer their fates and maybe change a little bit of the uh, fates of the world as well if it comes to that. We are going to be following the Shadowrun's meta plot uh, sort of uh, strictly but I'm not married to it if the players do something that uh, the changes it then it's gonna be changed basically the events are going to have an inertia towards uh, canonic events but uh, if they get changed they get changed the players themselves uh, are already talking and role playing on discord as i speak right now so you can go ch check this out there's going to be an invitation in the comments and the campaign is going to be a little bit of a unique thing because this is basically a home game that we made public for posterity and for shits and giggles. But uh, the between voiced sessions that's going to happen every two weeks, uh, there is a written role playing and game happening on Discord that is basically, you know, happening 24/7 ish uh, whenever people have the time and will to talk. And uh, those text events are shaping the future of the campaign, shaping the story that's going to come forward. Uh, all the role playing, all the legwork, all the information, the quest choosing, and so on, happens on the server. And uh, people can come over to uh, see and be viewers, to check check it out how the game looks like, or if they if they want to, people can uh, submit their own character ideas uh, that must. Go, only go through a couple of basic checkpoints 
and then they can in writing be leaving people in the in the campaign that have their part in shaping of the universe now a couple of things before we go forward uh, this is an r-rated campaign but uh, i'm not going to be go going into very gory and disgusting details because uh, this is a disney channel god damn it it's not but i'm still not going to go into uh, very disturbing stuff and uh, nonetheless like viewer beware the campaign can go into very very dark places because Shadowrun is a very dark game and uh, I definitely do recommend you be over 18 before watching. So, uh, with that being said, I think we can go to the actual conversation that we had. The first question is uh, by one of the players, Taiko, who asked uh, if we are going to be using uh, the X card that is uh, traveling around in the community of role-playing games lately. And uh, my response to that will already be live. So, familiar with X card? X card. The, oh yeah, uh, I heard about it, but uh, personally, I'm not using it. You can just send me a PM if something is disturbing. We're using Discord, so you can just tell it to me privately, or you can just just discuss it with the open with the players. And uh, if you like PM me during the game, like yo, this is disturbing, don't do it. Then I'm like gonna just steer around it and not do it. So like. This is an internet campaign with a lot of communicators, so I think symbolic systems might not be necessary. Got it. And then, um, since we're recording this for a podcast, do you want... Um, uh, I've heard outtakes of other podcasts, and sometimes they'll repeat a scene if it wasn't recorded correctly. Is that something you want to... Like, I guess, do you want to... Do you want to lean towards making a good podcast or having a, a good campaign? Well, first and foremost, this is supposed to be fun for everybody, but if something was an important part of the game and that moved forward and that later uh, audio was corrupted or something, then if people are fine with this, we can uh, replay it or I can just make, uh, like in editing, say that yo, audio was corrupted, and but this happened. It can be done right. either way. Okay. Uh... I'd rather just go with a story. I mean, it is mostly a game for us after all. Yeah, but you know, if, if something's yeah. gonna be like not clear on recording, then we can like either edit it in, in writing uh, or we can just like repeat as uh, dialogues, uh, more or less what happened. Or I'm going to repeat and uh, like read an audio narration of this is how this. Uh, oh this and that happening during the game. And yeah, speaking of uh, narration and all that, I never fudge roles and I absolutely, <laughs> like we will keep every single role in the game visible on the screen. There is no such thing as GM roles as far as I'm concerned. I'm just expecting players to like role play that they don't know the roles as they are. There is no need for uh, hiding anything as far as roles goes and the roles will dictate where the campaign goes. And I don't like to improvise uh, sessions themselves, but I can do it and more than once the game just goes completely where I didn't expect it. And that's fine, there is no problem with that. Do you, speaking of roles, um, do you, and this is easier on a physical table, do you want us to use our edge, how, how do you want the dice sequence to roll, like we roll our check, you roll your check and and then we decide to edge or how how do you want to handle edge i'm playing fifth edition and my dead system might be different than fourth edition i have no problem with uh, it being that that kind of a sequence uh, it's just uh, you can you seem totally use edge after the result of an opposed test happens and we're just going to like build the game around it uh, well, this is also Does fourth edition have a edge burden system? Yes, yes, it's it's pretty similar uh, as in fifth edition. Just uh, there are a couple of options that were removed in fifth edition because they like, were redundant. Hmm. I'd also like to discuss the fact that I don't want to play a murder hobo campaign. So, like, that's not a character I made, and I will not be playing with murder hobos. So, you know, I'm not saying we have to be a good party, but uh, I'd rather not become a serial killer in the next three sessions. 
I mean, like it's completely up to you guys what you do. I'm just, I, I'm just a GA, GM. And it's generally the game and the reputation of you guys as a people and as a team is going to uh, follow your actions. And uh, you will have absolute uh, freedom of decisions what of the propositions of runs that are going to pop up regularly after every session you are going to choose or you can start your own. So if you guys want to play a campaign where you don't kill anybody, then don't do it. Uh, well, without me, no. Go ahead. No, it, uh, taco first and then sucks, maybe. Uh, I was just going to say, my character... My understanding is that our characters aren't starting as hardened uh, criminals, so, like, I think my character probably result to, result, resort to intimidation and, uh, and like, non-lethal, and Serbi freaked out if he actually cast a geek someone. Sucks. Well, I was just going to comment that in general, that situation is going to be constrained best by all of us staying in consistent characters. The problem would happen if a character had no moral code for when they do decide to drop somebody. Yeah, that's why we have 20 questions that everybody uh, makes uh, and replies to, mostly for themselves during character creation that I posted link to on Discord, to establish your character's morality. So. We can just uh, work from that, and uh, since we the players, as Sax say, they doesn't start as hardened shadow runners, and so probably, I mean, uh, I had I don't have all the character sheets in my hand yet, but uh, probably, I'm going to say that uh, there is no serial killers in the party, <laughs> so uh, the probability of the campaign going a very murderous route is very unlikely, especially since we are starting with the kind of a neighborly help. Uh, lounge. So there is going to be session one, which is like the only situation that you are being put in a, a typical RPG quest mode that uh, you have a thing to be done. And uh, after you fi uh, fix the first quest, you have complete freedom of decisions. So maybe two weeks from now, you're about gonna be in the Caribbean League, uh, like helping pirates or smugglers or something. I don't know. I suspect there'll be things that will emerge in that first scenario that will give us threads. If we decide to jump on them, well, maybe we'll run those directions. Yeah, exactly. And after every session, uh, there is going to be interactions in writing in Discord with uh, either if you if you meet a fixer and want to become shadow runners, there's going to be propositions of runs for you to do, or the people who live in the same building are going to ask for your help, or the gangers will have some business for you. Just uh, basically emergent uh, events happening depending on whatever you do. If you don't mind, I have a somewhat larger question about uh, style of play regarding the game rules. Yeah. Simple form being that because I am so out of date on Shadowrun, you're going to have a lot of situations where I'm going to ask, I know exactly what skills are involved, but I don't know the role calculation. Can we turn that around and make it into a situation where I'm the example case for your teaching the system? Yeah, sure, that's absolutely no problem. Uh, uh, roles in the game are going to be done using your, cham uh, your character sheet in Chammer or PDF and I'm going to make a macro uh, on roll 20 where you just basically click a button, type the number of dice and whether or not you are using edge uh, to make the sixes exploding to reroll every six and that's gonna be uh, on screen visible and we can make it into an example of why do you have that kind of a dice pool in this situation. Well, that would certainly help me, and it probably would be engaging to some of your viewers who are not 100% on Shadowrun, or are more more modern and are not aware of the way it played back and forth. Yeah, that's absolutely great idea. And uh, speaking of uh, dice rolling and the game itself, uh, I have a couple of rules during the voiced sessions that I would like everybody to follow. This is mostly for convenience and for expedience during the game. So, uh, first of all, we are talking to communicators. I see and I hear that everybody's got that covered, but, uh, you know, uh, we are not trying to speak at the same time, which is, of course, happens because lag, because this and that, so no, but just, you know, we are going to be keeping common uh, courtesy in that, and I'm going to be enforcing it, even though I already see that there is no need for that. And uh, 
the players during combat or any situation that is going to be turn based I give uh, people 5 to 10 seconds to make up their mind what they want to do. So if once you decide and declare your action, this action goes and you roll. So we have to, when it comes to your turn, for example, in combat, I'm waiting for like 10 seconds to hear the start of your declaration. And if you can't, didn't make a decision then, then uh, that, that player turn is simply forfeit and it goes to the next person. Because Shadowrun is a very crunchy system. And if we get uh, boiled down into questioning of what happens, where is this guy standing, what's this happening, and so on, then every single combat scenario is going to last three hours. So this is a necess necessity of a, of a rule. But if in combat you have a question what happens uh, in this scenario or want to add some uh, out of character or in character additional question, there is a chat window on Roll20 that people can type in everything and I will be responding to that also in writing so as to not uh, bog down the fight. But if there is a situation where I'm telling uh, you what kind of a dice pool you have and why do you have it, then I can explain it in a like sentence or two without uh, bogging down the scenario. I think that's fair. Right. And in any other situation when there is no hurry and there is no pressure, then we can just pa pause and explain stuff. And uh, yeah, what else was I going to cover? That all of the out of character talks are done on the text chat only. Yeah, so that uh, the game can progress without uh, issues and lasting for 15 hours straight. Because of course we're gonna have some in-game memes. Yeah, memes are absolutely uh, allowed in or either on Discord or chat on Roll20 as long as it's not uh, harmful to the actual uh, everybody's enjoyment of the game, then sure. Oh, and yeah, uh, one more thing about my world building. So uh, there is many uh, GMs that like to mess with roles or they like to uh, put things uh, in the game to make it more exciting where it's uh, not happening as they imagined and so on. There is many different schools of game mastering, so uh, I'm going to just say what's mine. I build the stuff based on what you guys decide to do before session, so I would like to know at least one day in advance what's gonna happen, uh, what you are, what you want to do, so I prepare all the pictures and stuff like that, but there is no written scenario. If, for example, you guys are stealing a shoe <laughs> from a shoe factory, then there is going to be like 24 hours even before uh, there is going to be already a map for that, there is going to be guard patrols, there is going to be security, uh, that I establish based on that uh, facilities uh, finances and expenditures for uh, security and I use Shadowbeat and the real life guy, uh, the neo anarchist guy to real life to determine prices and all that and that thing doesn't change so there is never going to be a situation of a quantum troll appearing uh, to be an obstacle just because you guys are doing so well uh, for example, I had a party once that finished a session in 15 minutes because of they just like, went and don't did it. And that happened, it's fine. So, uh, unexpected events happen during game, but they happen during game because they were already pre-programmed to happen at that specific hour of that specific day. And I usually have... Uh, like you get the, let's say information that there is this run on Monday, you tell me that you're going to want to take it on Wednesday. So Wednesday, two hours later, there's going to be all of the legwork and all of the trails going back years, game time uh, with the uh, situations and why are they there. And you can explore it, you can learn as much as you want about it. Uh, I'm really good at world building like that. And the uh, situations are going to happen organically from that during the game and there will never be a situation where I put something because things are going too easy for you or where I make things easier for you because you guys are in trouble. It's basically, uh, to quote the immortal Ivan Drago, if you die, you die. Well, what I like well you know, that's what we signed up for. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. Uh, what I like most about the way you do it is that the world doesn't revolve around us. The, I mean, we're gonna have two magicians and maybe a Fizat if he appears. 
Uh, but that doesn't mean that every facility is gonna have now magical protections just because we have to do something. Yeah, that helps expensive. Like, yeah. Uh, th the fact that you guys have two mages doesn't matter whatsoever for the world. Mages, like magically active people uh, in as an entire group in 2055 are like 1? 1-2% one, one of population depending on where you are, unless you're in uh, Ireland, tier Nanog, then it's like 4% of the population and 7% of elves, but only in Ireland, <laughs> that are magically active. So while in uh, more uh, wealthy and well-defended facilities and houses, uh, something like magical wards and watcher spirits or even elementals on security duty are a common place, but uh, an actual mage that's gonna come and uh, defend a facility is a super rarity. And on the street level that you're playing, uh, there are, which you and your characters know full well, the only mages there are uh, the NPCs listed on the NPC list that's on Discord and you guys. Makes sense. We'll be basically gods. Ah, yes, of course. <laughs> Until somebody shots us. Yeah. So, yeah, basically the neighborhood has a bigger uh, percentage of mages than the rest of the Yucas sector in Denver, but that's because of mostly because of the magical anomaly that uh, is in the building you live in, which may or may not be a point of our campaign. It may just be a side. Uh, prop forever, you don't have to investigate it if you don't want it, and there is uh, right now every single NPC that I posted on Discord has an entire campaign attached to it, <laughs> basically. Always good to have options. Yeah, and if you guys want to start something of your own without uh, looking at for NPCs what they're doing, go for it. Just, you know, let me know at least 20 hours in advance what you're doing so I can put stuff in place. Okay, uh, any questions relating to that? So you mentioned some time ago that we may go through some of the classic campaigns from Shadowrun. Yeah, do it's we possible. Want to do that? Yeah, if you guys want to do it, we can do it. That's where I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, I'm game. I'm going to give. Uh, I'm going to give you an in uh, an in to every single mission that happens after 2055. So guys want to pick up on that go for it but i am going to be changing those campaign because those old 20 year old games uh, and modules tend to be slightly railroad railroady and there is a lot of things that don't really make much sense sometimes and also they don't uh, take into consideration our campaign and i do so i'm definitely going to be remodeling the modules to fit our game No small number of those were a lot older than 20 years. Yeah, but most of the 25 and older yeah, older modules are to years 2051 and 2053. I think there is five modules in 2054 and earlier in 2055. But we are right now in second edition Shadowrun uh, game time, uh, like timeline. So that would be right about the time I picked up the Shadowrun book for the first time. The uh, when does the Denver uh, plot change happen in fifth edition? That's like in twenty seventy nine, is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we pretty much don't have to worry. Yeah, uh, that is earlier. There are changes. I mean, right now we are playing in the Denver, the city of shadows, uh, a campaign for Shadowrun boxed set situation. We are based based off of that. The events that are set up in this campaign are set up, and the, the next meta plot that happens in Denver is in the year of the comet. That's 2061, and after that it's 2075 and 2079. But yeah, if uh, I am going to be following meta plot uh, events, have the inertia towards the meta plot of Shadowrun. But if you do something that changes those events, well, they're gonna be changed. I'm, I, we aren't stuck with a glue to that. Whatever happens, happens. I'm pretty sure we're going to have our hands full getting out of our little shithole at the corner of Denver. And the meta plots will happen around us. 
Yeah, that's a, that's that's an option. I'm going to be uh, setting up in the next couple of days uh, a street cred for the like, specific uh, like a reputation system for the entire neighborhood and all the groups uh, and the influential people that you guys met. I'm going to basically rework and overhaul the entire Shadowrun reputation system to work with that. And you will be able to, and both players and the viewers, to track your standing with other groups. Sorry. And the groups are going to also be doing things uh, against each other or to help each other that they may ask for your help or they may not. And you may help them or you may not. I'm going to be uh, rolling for all of those events uh, and make tests to determine uh, the outcome. So, as we're speaking right now, I have no idea where this campaign is going to go, and I will usually know like five minutes before you guys. Yeah, it's the same with me when I. But yeah, there are overarching events happening, there are potential campaigns that you might get involved with, but uh, you know, it's freedom of choice. So yeah, do you guys have any questions uh, of uh, any mother that you want to make clear before the game starts? I had just come on with Mike, but real quick I was going to say that you have the situations of some of the uh, characters in the uh, viewer pool are going to stand out more as one willing to engage and you might make a short list of those, especially in the case where you have one of us actually achieve our personal goals somehow and naturally rotate out of the group at some point, even if we don't end up dead, which is a far more likely outcome. Yeah, it can happen. There is uh, no like rules or limitations in that. This is uh, more or less a broadcasted home game, so we're gonna do whatever's fun and uh, adjust to everyone's uh, like timelines and schedules mostly. And Taco? Uh, um... I would just say someone, since this is a broadcasted campaign, maybe go with someone you have experience. Maybe, maybe observe them in the in the offline session before going in, just so it. Since this is recorded, you have to have a more stable player base. Yeah, it would be great, and I'm definitely going to be uh, looking at uh, what's going on and uh, choose the best person for the job, I suppose. And if somebody rotates out of the game, then we will rotate in somebody who is most enthusiastic. There is going to be enthusiasm competitions, we are going to tie everybody up by the anchor, drop them in a pit full of scorpions with one bottle of lube, and whoever comes out alive wins. We have to steal that for a, uh, a gang. <laughs> You're welcome to it. That is a bit refiti. Okay, so uh, one more thing. Uh, the way I'm playing, as I said, I'm all about uh, emergent gameplay and world building, and that has one logical consequence that is uh, going against uh, literally every GM rulebook and uh, handbook ever written ever, which is uh, I do not uh, moderate uh, the uh, time on stage between players, and I'm not to find, trying to find something for you guys to do. That responsibility is on the players. Basically, I'm the arbiter in the world creating the entire thing, but it's the player's own job to find the use for his character in the session that they chose to go to, to find something they want to do, to engage themselves into the game. I would, I would throw mountains of content at you, but you have to come forward and say that, yeah, this is what I want to do, and this is, how, this is the, the plan we made, and this is how we want to proceed and uh, make plans that involve every character in the game. I'm not moderating that. And uh, I hope it's gonna be fine. So, what do you guys think about that kind of gameplay? Always like a case of player agency. Yeah, you have complete agency, and I'm just like not pushing people on the stage, like, yeah, this is where your character can shine. This is onto the player to find a moment where the character will shine. And then, tomorrow played with me before for like a couple of years, so she knows exactly how I run the game. Uh, yeah, that, that's a thing that totally works, as long as players want to want it to work, because um, in our home, last home, ga home game I created a character that was basically a um, stealthy ninja that like, hit people in the face, and to be honest, the first time we went on proper runs and had to do legwork, she had nothing to do, but I figured out something for her to be useful, 
which saved me from sitting on my ass for three hours while everybody else was like, you know, decking, rigging, going on astral searches. So yeah, player agency. That's can't can't make it even more important than it is. Yep. So okay, uh, I think we covered everything. So is there anything I missed? Because I, I I have my very long script that no I don't I don't have a script for this for this recording at all. So if there, is there anything? Uh, else? Okay, go go ahead. When's the first uh, session? Uh, we've scheduled the entire time on the game is going to be every two weeks. I'm right now looking at the calendar. Um, 6 p.m. GMT. That's uh, what the uh, time everybody agreed with, and it's going to start on 7th of December, 6 p.m. GMT, and the next one's gonna be 21st, and so on. Unless, of course, the this particular week there is simply not going to be fit thing for anyone, then we're going to move to whatever time people have time to play. 7th of December, so it's a Saturday. Yep. Yeah, okay, yeah, we're, we're good. Yeah, and uh, even if we have to reschedule the game itself to happen, for example, on Friday or Sunday, that shouldn't uh, influence the actual upload time because uh, I'm just gonna edit the, the fe feature uh, footage <laughs> later and, up and uh, upload it, up, up, I think, on the same day. It's probably gonna be like a Monday or the next Friday. I don't know. We are going to see how it oh. goes. This is a... Uh, uh... Is this going on? Uh, that was the plan? Sorry, I didn't hear. Is this going? Is this is this going on? So YouTube has uh, um, is not particularly kind to content that has curse words because it's not um, advertiser friendly. Oh yeah, but uh, you see, I have a YouTube channel on which I'm basically fooling around and playing video games, and I swear like a like a shoemaker. So don't worry about it. Just let the F, F bombs drop. I don't make any money on that channel whatsoever. <laughs> if they don't monetize me, I they... don't want to demonetize you. Oh no, they will demonetize me. They're just like they did every other video I made. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a. I thought it's absolutely no problem. So we are pro going to keep it classy, probably. But uh, swear, swear words are generally not a problem especially since it is Shadowrun so there is going to be some R-rated content a direct load of it yep like people who live in Shadowrun and people who play Shadowrun always say that oh no it's a cyberpunk dystopia those guys are optimists and they are just like trying to close their eyes to the reality of the macabre that's the world of Shadowrun <laughs> that's a good way to put it I like how one um, one stream I watched had like a um, rated R uh, icon at the bot on their overlay. Yeah, that I might steal one. that for. My yeah, there will be one. My there is going to be an intro saying that this is an R-rated campaign and the content is not created for children. Because YouTube wants the like all the content to be flagged as not created for children. My entire channel is marked as not created for children. <laughs> but I'm going to be making an intro that mentions it specifically. So we've decided to just go with YouTube videos without a live stream, right? Yeah, it's gonna be easier because we can uh, cut out the uh, like things that inevitably happen during the game, like toilet breaks and like phone somebody's phone calling and uh, you know keep falling off. Them. <laughs> Whatever happens. What? I have a damaged hip. Come on. <laughs> and uh, generally, it's going to be easier and we can edit stuff out, add commentary, subtitles if necessary. We can make, uh, for example, in the VODs, we can have always a written explanation of uh, what rules are in play at this particular moment. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be easier, I think. Um, I guess another nitpicky question. Do you, uh, do you plan to so associate with the Shadowcasters or, uh, C Uh, not in any professional capacity, I think, but uh, sure, like, we might uh, talk with the guys and maybe, maybe we can have special guests every now and again coming over. I can make a couple of phone calls and, like, bother people in the middle of the night. 
like, hey, 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 come play with us, come play with us, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be fun, come on! It, it works, like. Works on me. <laughs> but yeah, sure, we will see where it goes. I have no, no plans at this moment. Well, I think that it's also the fact that this is a home game. This is not supposed to be a big media project that's gonna get us millions of views and exclusive rights by Amazon, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, I'm not going to say that if Amazon says that they're going to give me 10 million million for exclusive rights, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I'll say no. But our general sponsor is Fukito. One pill a day keeps worry away. Right. And probably a lot of coffee. Yep. Well, I think I know everything I wanted. Okay, guys. I'm all good. Solid here. Uh, yeah. Okay then, I think that concludes the session, session zero then. So, thanks for coming guys, thanks for watching, uh, all the guys who are watching. And uh, we stay tuned, because a lot of stuff is going to happen and there, there will be dragons. Oh no. <laughs> oh no indeed. Thanks for having us on for this and looking forward to it. Okay then, so. Thanks for watching. You can like probably press the like button, I guess. <laughs> Subscribe and stuff. And there will be a lot of content coming up starting December 7. Every two weeks there's gonna be a session and uh, it's gonna be uploaded a couple of days later. And there will be a permanent, I hope, Discord invite in the comment section of this video. 